Hello, my darlings. Today we are doing a compare and contrast video. One of you messaged me on Instagram recently and asked if I would share my compare and contrast thoughts on Angelarium, Oracle of Emanations, and Mausolea, Oracle of Souls. So we're gonna do that today. All right, so let's start with, they are both published by Lo Scarabio. So you can tell same box size and you're gonna get the same, unfortunately, cardstock quality with both decks. Um, Oracle of Emanations is by Eli Manaya and Peter Morbacher did the artwork. I have a full review of this video on the channel and the link is posted down below for that. Masalia Oracle of Souls is illustrated by Jason Engel. So just to give you an ex um, comparison here, these are the backings. This is Oracle of Emanations and this is Masalia Oracle of Souls. Now, I'm going to be talking about both of these decks and sharing some deck images with you so that you can see if you want to purchase one or both of these or if you already have one, maybe you don't need to purchase the other. So the cardstock, again, same for both decks, very shiny. The Oracle decks are um, created in multiple languages. And so you really only get a couple pages worth of information. But I do think for each of these decks, it is good to at least give that Oracle deck, um, excuse me, that Oracle guidebook for each one a once over so that you can understand the angels attached to Oracle of Emanations and the darker deity associated with or uh, Mausolea Oracle of Souls. There also are some good jumping off points in the guidebooks, but there's not a lot of meat there. I would say look at it as a jumping off point, And if you really feel called to connect with the deity or angels associated with the card imagery, then I would say do research on your own and you know connect at a deeper level from a research perspective that way. I am so sorry, I've been talking a lot today and I need to take a sip of seltzer. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with Oracle of Emanations. There were supposed to be multiple decks in this series by Peter Morbacher, I believe, and I'm really sad that there haven't been. The artwork in Oracle of Emanations, truthfully, I prefer a little bit to Masalia Oracle of Souls. However, I do think that both of these decks are very different. Oracle of Emanations, the Angelarium deck, it's definitely focused on angels. Um, we are looking at more of an occult esoteric way of connecting with them, but you are working with predominantly angelic energy in the deck itself. It's very different from Masalia Oracle of Souls, which has a dark deity feel to it, um, and as well, the Kabbalah is heavily referenced in the Oracle of Emanations, the Angelarium Oracle. I know it's the Angelarium, Angelarium Oracle, but I always call it Oracle of Emanations, not Angelarium. And I think it's because even though I'm not an angel girl, I do really love this deck and I enjoy the way that the angels were created from the artwork perspective in this deck. I really do like Peter Morbacher's artwork a great deal. So biggest difference, angels in this deck, dark deity, dark guides in Masalia Oracle of Souls. This deck is great for meditation, for connecting more deeply with the Kabbalah, and for working with specific angels on your journey. And again, I do have a full review of this deck, I believe, or at least a reveal. It'll be in the description box below. Show you a few more images from here. This has a very air element quality to it for me as I work with it. And it's definitely one that I only use um, at specific times for sure. It's definitely not an all the time deck, but it is really beautiful. It captures angelic energy in a way that is it doesn't feel strictly Christian. It feels more occult in its nature, and that's really enjoyable if you have significant wounding around Christianity like I do. It's a really beautiful way to connect with angelic energy, but it doesn't feel like you're getting Christianity um, kind of like forced down your throat. So 
Angelarium, um, I would say, is definitely one that you want to work with when you're looking for that type of an energy. When you want to connect with the cult symbolism within the Kabbalah um, or the um, Key of Solomon, and when you want to have that air element, kind of like light energy, in order to understand um, aspects of your own journey. I think it's definitely a spiritual path deck as opposed to divination. Like I don't really use this as a clarifying deck. Um, and I will say right now of the two, if I had to choose which one I was going to, like if it was a choice, if it came down to a choice, artwork wise, I prefer Angelarium, but for bang for your buck, from a reading perspective, Mausolea Oracle of Souls is the one that I would choose. It's, it's, it's definitely one that's really, it's more impactful to my spiritual practice and it's much more um, all around as far as readings go. So I can use it for shadow work. I can use it as a clarifier. Um, I can use it across the board for clients, whereas this feels like it's a very specific kind of tool and I don't feel called to use it in general readings. So let's go over to Masalia of Souls. This is, hold on a second, I was going to say, I'm like, oh, but I do, pause guys, <laughs> I do want to say um, the image of Azriel in the Angelarium deck is one of my favorite depictions of the Archangel Azrael. Um, I work with Azrael a lot. I actually have a tattoo on my body in honor of Azrael. And I do love the depiction of him in this deck. Um, it might be, might be on my downstairs altar, but let me see if I put him back in here because I had um, his representation up on the altar all of last year downstairs. I was working with Azriel a great deal, so he may not be in here. It's the one with the book and the apple. Here he is. So this reproduction of Azriel really, really was very pivotal for me in connecting with him in a very potent way. And he is the angel of death. So I do shout out to this deck for giving me such a beautiful way to connect with Azriel. Okay. La, la, la. Let's get to Masalia Oracle of Souls. Okay, so here's your backing. As you can see, it has a much grittier, darker feel. It's not the heaven energy of the Angelarium. It feels more underworld. It's darker. It has um, masculine and feminine representations and everything in between. I have, I post, I talked about this, excuse me, um, in the decks, my most recent installment in the decks that shook me series. And due to a poll on Instagram that I put up the other day, there is a full review of this deck on the channel now. I will put those links down below if you want to check out those uh, reviews and um, thoughts on this deck. But you can tell just by looking at it, com completely different feel than Angelarium. And as I said, if I had to choose, like if I could only work with one of these, I would choose to keep Masalia, Oracle of Souls. It's just more in alignment with my aesthetic and also the type of work I do. I tend to do a lot of shadow work and um, assisting others to open up to like life purpose and um, karmic wounds and things like that. And so this deck just, I end up working with it a lot more. Also, a very helpful about this deck, Angelarium does have one key word, um, as well as the, the um, association to the Kabbalah, but the Masalia Oracle of Souls has three key words at the bottom, which is really awesome for clarification in readings. So, as I said, this deck can be great for shadow work, for understanding like where you're at in your story and journey at this point in time but it's also a great clarifier to tarot in readings which means that you can use it equally as well in divinatory readings so it's not just for shadow work or just for spiritual path focused readings you can also use this for divinatory um, readings so 
for that, this is a much more well-rounded deck insofar as I think you can get a lot more use out of it. Now, that's not to say that you won't be able to use Angelarium for divination. It just doesn't work with me that way. So you can see that the warping on this deck is more pronounced than Angelarium, but they both have warping. And I am very gentle with my decks. I take very good care of them and all of my Scarabio decks just do that kind of warped thing you can see. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan. As you can tell by my face, I don't like it, but there's nothing I can do about it. So again, this is well-rounded. It works for readings across the board, but it is very aesthetically dark. It's definitely a darker themed deck. The deity, the um, archetypes that you're working with here really are more dark themed. So if that's you know, if that if that gets you excited, then this is definitely a deck that you're going to enjoy working with. Um, and again, I would say if I had to choose between the two, it would definitely be Mausolea Oracle of Souls. However, I do want to speak to having both decks in your collection because I do think that there is validity in having both of these decks in your collection. It's kind of like you have the heaven and hell aspect of the spectrum for yourself as a reader, uh, whether you read for just yourself or if you read for other people as well, you kind of get to pull from both the light and the dark aspects, having both of these decks in your collection. And in fact, I actually store the Dark Mirror, Mausolea of Souls, and the Angelarium Oracle all together on my shelf because I don't know, they feel kind of like, and I know that they weren't crafted to go together at all. They're by different artists and authors, but there's something about these three together that I really like. I like that Angelarium brings that lighter angelic energy and Mausolea and Dark Mirror, but particularly Mausolea bring in the shadow side, the underworld, that energy of Hades. Uh, I like that there's this juxtaposition and balance with both of these decks. So if you feel called to work with both of these decks, I think that they make worthy additions to a collection for sure. If it's down to a choice, I personally prefer Masalia Oracle of Souls, but I like darker themed decks. If you're someone who really prefers lighter themed decks, you may feel prompted to work with Angelarium. Definitely go with the one that speaks to you the most. Uh, or purchase both, have both in your collection. But I think they're both awesome decks. The artwork in both is unique um, and they do provide an opportunity to do a lot of journaling and journeying with the entities that are contained within each deck. I think they're very different from each other. I do not think they have similar energies. I think they each stand alone. And again, they bookend together well in a practice also. So for the viewer who requested this video, I hope you find this helpful. If you're on the fence with purchasing either of these decks, I also hope you found this helpful as well. As always, I am sending you guys so much love and many blessings. I'll see you in the next video.